Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our opening ceremony is about to begin. Good afternoon to all participants. Welcome to Department of History, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, for the virtual summer course on tropical aquaculture and fisheries management 2022. My name is Laila from Universitas Gajah Mada, and such an honor for me to welcome you in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the program today, we would like to welcome the Honorable Rector of Universitas Gajah Mada, represented by Director of the Office of International Affairs, Dean and Vice Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, guests and all participants. Before we continue to the next session, please allow me to read today's agenda Singing Indonesian National Anthem and Gajah Mada Hymn. Report for the Chairman of the Committee. Speech from Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, represented by Vice Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada. Speech and opening by Rector of Universitas Gajah Mada, represented by Director of the Office of International Affairs and Plenary Station. Ladies and gentlemen, as the first agenda, we are going to sing Indonesian National Anthem, Indonesia Raya, and Gajah Madahim.
Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to please the Honorable Professor Dr. Insinyur Murwantoko, Master of Science, as a chairperson to deliver the report of virtual summer course. Professor Murwantoko, the opportunity is yours. Thank you very much, Honorable Rector of the Universitas Gajah Mada or Representative, Honorable Director of the Office of International Affairs, UGM, Imade Adi Andi Arsana, PhD, Honorable Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, Honorable the Vice Deans of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, Honorable Invited Speakers, Honorable Head of the Department of Fisheries, Professor Alim Isnan Setio, Distinguished uh, Participant, all of the committee's member, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for all of you in uh, Southeast Asia and surrounding. Good morning, all of you in uh, Middle East, Europe, and also in Africa. Good evening for all you in uh, America. Thank you very much for uh, Miss Laila as a master of ceremony, uh, giving opportunity for me as a chairman of this committee. First of all, uh, uh, let's allow me to say and thanks to Allah, the God of the universe, who has blessed us so uh, we can join in this important uh, moment on healthy and peace condition. Please uh, allow me to warm welcome all of you in this uh, virtual summer course on tropical aquaculture and fisheries management 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, this summer course is organized by the Department of Fisheries, Faculty of Agriculture, UGM, in collaboration with MAI, Masyarakat Aquaculture Indonesia, or Indonesian Aquaculture Society and also with INFEM, Indonesian Network of Fish Head Management. This summer course is also supported by Office of International Affairs, UGM. So thank you very much for the collaboration and support from the MAI, INFEM, and also from the UG, UGM. Ladies and gentlemen, the global environment change have, has come to us as indicate the global warming, increasing the temperature, increasing the sea level, increasing the carbon dioxide in temperature uh, in uh, atmosphere, and also the, uh, uh, and also on. As the result, we can uh, feel the extreme uh, weather around, around us. We have been informed in the media that uh, at the same time, the some part there are dry and lack of water, but on the uh, another area, they run the uh, have problem of flood. So this is uh, also happen in the local area. So uh, kind of in this uh, area in, in Java, there are uh, special language. So the people Java they will uh, say in this uh, own language, udan salah mongso. This means this is the uh, rain. Uh, in at not the season because actually uh, in these uh, years the June, June and July usually in uh, Java this is dry but in these uh, years we still have a lot of rain 
So this is uh, what is the uh, uh, extreme weather. So this is not only happen in the terrestrial, but also in aquatic system. So the aquatic, aquatic system that sustain uh, fisheries and our culture are undergoing significant change. And the projection indicate that uh, this change will uh, continue in the future. So we have to raise the, our awareness and also to take the action. For this reason, this summer course is conducted. This, commerce, uh, this uh, summer course will provide the presentation and discuss, uh, discussion on broad aspect of aquatic environment sciences in relation to the global environment change. The more detailed topic related to the aquaculture and also to the management in tropical re uh, region will be explored. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the important uh, partner in the summer uh, summer course is the participants. So I would like to thanks to all the all of the participants who have accepted our invitation. We give a uh, high appreciation for your particip uh, participation in the summer course. I would like to report to all of you that this participant uh, this, uh, joined in this uh, summer course is 164 participants. This is composed by 127 participants from Indonesia and 37 uh, from international participants came from the uh, several countries uh, like we can see in this uh, slide. Ladies and gentlemen, in total, we will have uh, nine topics will bring us in the multidisciplinary view regarding to the aquaculture and also the fisheries management. So not only scientific uh, will be discussed, but also the, we have a special uh, session. This is in the uh, community empowerment. We can see in this uh, slide, the uh, number nine, this is community, community practices and, empower, in, and empowerment in abducting uh, global environment change. So for the uh, today uh, talk, uh, the speaker are Mr. Nomura Ichiro. This is the uh, fisheries expert from the Japan and also uh, Professor uh, Dr. Rahman Dahuri, a professor for IPP University and also chairman of Indonesian Aquaculture Society. So in total, uh, there are 26 uh, farmers uh, uh, scientists, scientists will address uh, for the speaker. The 12 speaker, this is came from Indonesia, uh, came from the Faroe uh, uh, institution in Indonesia. And there are 14 international speaker uh, from the uh, many uh, continents. But I'm sorry, uh, I, I cannot uh, mention one by one. So we give a uh, high appreciation to all of the invited speakers who have uh, spent their time, uh, attention, and also for the uh, expertise. Your contribution in, is important and invaluable to the success of this summer course. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, course is conducted using uh, online, so this is virtual. This is we can, we'll use a Zoom platform and supported by ELO, Learning Management System owned by the Universitas Gajah Mada. The summer course will be uh, conducted from uh, today, uh, 3 uh, August until 29 August. And several activities will be conducted by uh, students, the lecturers, group discussion, virtual field uh, excursion, pre-test, post-test, post -test, individual assignment and also group assignment. This uh, course uh, is equivalent to uh, three credit. So uh, this credit is uh, transferable and uh, great mark on the individual student performance. Thank you very much for all the uh, committee. I believe that all of you have worked very hard to, uh, for preparing this uh, summer course. Thank you very much also to everyone who have supported uh, the summer course. Before I finish uh, my talk, we ask to the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture or Representative, 
and also from the UGM or uh, representative to address uh, speech. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and have a nice and fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, I, the time I turn back to the uh, master of cer uh, ceremony. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Murbandoko, for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so pleased to invite the Honorable Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, represented by Vice Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, Joe PhD, to deliver the speech. Dr. Sukejo, the opportunity is yours. Thank you, Mbak Raila, Matter of Ceremonies. Uh, distinguished uh, resource person, distinguished participant, the Director of International Affairs of Universitas Gajah Mada, Vice Dean, Department Head Officeries, and then Chairman and all of the committee of summer course, and then also lecturer and students. Yeah, we are very, very happy. On behalf of the Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, uh, we do appreciate in the, all of the resource persons, participants from various countries, as mentioned by Chairman of the Summer Course. The participant is 37 from uh, 11 countries, and then also resource person, 14 person from uh, foreign countries. I think this is very good opportunity for us for exchanging the idea, exchanging the knowledge, uh, how to manage uh, properly on the aquaculture and uh, fisheries resource management. And then so on behalf of Dean, we also highly appreciate of the effort, commitment, and hard work of the organizing committee in preparing the summer course. And then so hopefully uh, within one month, we will get opportunity to etching any idea. And as reported by the uh, chairman of the committee, this is first time in the field of the fisheries and aquaculture of uh, doing the summer course. In terms of the agriculture or tropical agriculture, we have already three summer course. Hopefully the first virtual summer course on tropical aquaculture and fisheries management, uh, which this time is arranged uh, virtually. Hopefully in the future we'll arrange uh, not virtually, but uh, physically. So hopefully many resource persons, many participants from various country will come to Jogja and then exchanging directly the idea and the knowledge and then visiting some places during the summer course. Hopefully in the future we have chance uh, for meets uh, physically. And then uh, I think discussing on the resource management in the fisheries, aquaculture, this is very good idea. Uh, in case of the area, maybe later on Pak Madi will explain, we have Three fourths area of Indonesia is a resource, uh, uh, water resource. It means also related to the fisheries development, aquaculture development. It means also our future is fisheries, our future is aquaculture, because our area three, three fourths is uh, water resources. And then, uh, yeah, in maybe one or two or three decades, I think the paradigms in development are changing. If before green revolution is quite popular, but currently blue revolution also quite popular. So we manage the water resource into blue revolution and then blue economics, it is also quite popular. And then it is directly related to the water resource management, how to utilize water for uh, mobilizing the resources on the fisheries, aquaculture, and so on. So I think this is a good idea, good uh, chance in the future who we develop uh, water resource uh, in the future, especially in Indonesia. And then the last, on behalf of the deans, yeah, we do hope that all of participants will have the good uh, chance to, to change, accumulating, and then sharing knowledge, idea, innovation, including also policies, and also some theoretical perspective how to manage the tropical aquaculture, fisheries management properly, not only in tropical country, but maybe some idea come from the other countries. Uh, have a nice uh, activities in all of the program of the summer course on tropical aquaculture and fisheries management 2022. 
thank you very much. Then be back to the Master of Ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Subajo, for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce Rector of Universitas Gajah Mada, represented by Director of the Office of International Affairs, E. Made Andi Arsana, PhD, deliver his speech to officially open this event. Dr. E. Made Andi Arsana, the opportunity is yours. Thank you very much, Ibu Laila, for the opportunity. Uh, I would like to say hello first to uh, Pak Wakil Dekan, Pak Subajo, thank you very much. Uh, Pak Suadi also, thank you very much. My all two good friends and two seniors also, thank you very much. Uh, Pak Alim, thank you very much also, Pak. Uh, we have some uh, colleagues here, Pak Amir also, and Pak Prof. Murantoko, thank you very much for organizing such a great event. Really appreciate it. Uh, from, uh, on behalf of uh, Universitas Gajah Mada, first we would like to apologize for Ibu Rektor not being able to be here because uh, she's now in other event that is uh, not more important but as equally as important than uh, this event. So uh, Ibu Rektor send her best regards to everybody here. Uh, we also would like to uh, acknowledge here we have uh, our distinguished experts, uh, Professor Rohmin Dahuri. Hatur nuhun sangat, Pak Menteri sudah berkenan rauh, and also our other expert, uh, Ichiro Sensei. Thank you very much also for coming. We really appreciate your participation and uh, sharing of knowledge. Um, uh, I think Pak Subajo is right about the size of Indonesia. Uh, we have a three fourth of our area is water. Uh, th that is the proportion only. But we, if you talk about the size, the size of Indonesia is probably equal to uh, Europe. So from Ireland to Kazakhstan is covered by Indonesia. We see it from the map. Or if you compared with the uh, United States, for example, uh, the distance from California to New York is around 4,000 kilometers, but Indonesia is 5,000, so longer than the United States. So I think that is why uh, fisheries, I think, is a timely topic. It's a really relevant topic for us uh, because we are not only talking about the sustainability of uh, fisheries management or fisheries utilization in Indonesia, but also for the world. So I think that is one of the contribution of Indonesia. So I think this is really timely for the Department of Fisheries to conduct this uh, summer program. Uh, I also congratulate uh, and welcome each and everyone from other countries. I, I can see it from different countries here, uh, which is a bit unfortunate because you cannot really come here physically I agree once again with Pak Subajo. We, we really hope that we can have this uh, program offline next year. So uh, everybody can uh, not only learn, but also can enjoy the hospitality of our city, uh, the city of students in Yogyakarta. So with that, once again, uh, uh, I would like to wish uh, everybody to have a productive meeting. And uh, with the pray to God, we officially open this summer program. Thank you very much once again. Terima kasih, Pak Lea. Thank you, Dr. Imadi Andi Arsana for this speech. Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now entering the main session. First of all, please allow me to introduce our moderator who will be lead the session, Dr. Dr. Swadi did his undergraduate study at Universitas Gajah Mada Master Study in the Regional and Environmental Science Department of Ibaraki University, Doctoral Study at the Department of Agriculture, Economics and Semiotic Society, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. Currently, Dr. Swati is an active lecturer and researcher in the field of fisheries research management, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Gajah Mada, and his research interests, socio-economic of fishery, empowerment of fishery research, Fishery economy and rural development. Swati, the opportunity is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Laila, uh, for the opportunity and thank you, organizer, uh, for giving me a chance to lead uh, this uh, session. Um, uh, thank you, Pa Andi and Pa Sbejo. Uh, for uh, introduction speech uh, on this occasion. Well, um, before we start, uh, I would like uh, to thank uh, to uh, Nomura Sensei. Uh, thank you for your time always uh, 
uh, you allocate uh, your valuable time to come to Yogyakarta, even virtually today. I heard uh, that uh, you are not in a good condition, uh, but uh, you still want to share with us uh, today, Odaizini Sensei. Uh, and also, I would like to thank to uh, Pa Rohmin, our ministry. Our we are really proud of uh, Pa Rohmin uh, for always uh, allocating time to come to Jogja. Uh, and even today, uh, we, we will have a session online. Okay, but, um, today we will have uh, two speakers, uh, invited speakers, distinguished speakers. And um, for the first uh, session, uh, I will invite uh, Nomura Sensei, uh, Prof. Nomura, um, to share with us uh, about the global trend on environment and fisheries policy and uh, economic uh, perspective. Um, I think uh, many of us in the fisheries know well uh, Prof. Nomura, uh, because if you read the uh, FAO report a uh, few couple of years ago, we will read uh, his name uh, as a lead in the fisheries division in FAO. And also we know uh, him very well because uh, uh, he contribute much on uh, fisheries in Indonesia uh, for a uh, few ministry, I think, I believe, uh, in uh, Jakarta, in Ministry of uh, Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Uh, and we will uh, uh, hear uh, Nomura Sensei's uh, presentation uh, today first. Uh, we have about the 30 minutes with Nomura Sensei, and then we uh, going for the next uh, presentation uh, from uh, Prof. Rohmin. Uh, okay, uh, can we directly go to the session? Uh, pa Nomura Sensei is already here, right? Oh, okay, Nomura Sensei, uh, time is yours uh, and um, hope you're getting well soon and can come back uh, to Indonesia again. Please, Nomura Sensei, time is yours. Uh, terima kasih. Thank you, uh, Dr. Suwadi. Selamat siang. Selamat sore. Can you hear me? Selamat siang. Yes, yes. We can hear. Well, we can hear you clearly. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah, very clear. Okay, sorry. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, your kind word, uh, Dr. Swadi. Uh, as a matter of fact, you are right. Uh, I got uh, COVID-19 test positive uh, <laughs> last Sunday. That's why I'm uh, from home. Uh, I, I caught it despite I had the fourth vaccine injection. So in a way, I am not so lucky. Despite the four vaccine shots, I caught it. But probably I'm lucky, but because my symptom is not so bad. So that's why I can participate uh, this uh, uh, virtual summer course. First of all, uh, uh, it's my privilege and honor uh, to be invited to this prestigious Wu game for the third time. Uh, I gave a lecture <laughs> twice in this university in person. And um, so I'm fortunate that uh, we could not join you in person, but uh, that, that uh, we have to accept that. Uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Swadi introduced, uh, I, I, I was usual, I was before the uh, uh, government officer in, in, the, in the Japanese government, followed by my career in the FEO history department. And later, I stayed in Jakarta as a, a long-term fishery advisor to Kakapei 
twice. Uh, well, first time from uh, 2013 uh, 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 to 15, and with the one year intermission, second time from 2016 to 2007, uh, 2020. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for, for changing the slide. It's my very, very, very uh, 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 succinct career. I am now a special advisor to the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Fisheries Agency of the Japanese government, not on the full-time job, but uh, on ad hoc basis to help uh, incumbent government officer uh, to deal with the RFMO issues. Uh, so I am still partly incum incumbent. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, since I don't have uh, my material at hand uh, because I'm at home, I was supposed to be assisted, assisted by my colleague at my, at my office, but uh, unfortunately I had to stay at home another week. <laughs> so uh, my lecture may not be as complete as I could have wished to apologize for that. I try my best. Uh, uh, my, the, the presentation I am going to give you is uh, not so much of technical nature because technical and biological or scientific nature would be much more explored by other uh, colleagues in the following days and for aquaculture probably uh, later today by, prof uh, by professor. Uh, uh, so uh, my uh, 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 topic mostly centered on policy and economic issue, focusing on environmental and fishery interaction. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, in my uh, uh, experience in giving, having given lecture in the Indonesian uh, 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 universities in, in fisheries, uh, those topics are not uh, well uh, uh, usually heard by other lecturers. So or probably I can uh, give you a new list or for your uh, 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 material uh, uh, to get in touch with some uh, international uh, fishery policy and environmental perspective. Uh, this uh, slide uh, gives uh, some general picture. Uh, uh, for the uh, time of lecture, uh, uh, despite uh, Dr. Swadi's uh, suggestion of 30 minutes, I think uh, uh, me and the following keynote speaker will be given 40 minutes uh, so that uh, uh, both of us uh, have uh, uh, the joint uh, question answer still session for 30 minutes. Uh, if that arrangement does not fit your convenience, uh, please uh, uh, let me know. I will follow your guidance, of course. So my time schedule is uh, uh, I, uh, we, I, I will finish my lecture uh, in, in, uh, by a uh, 3.10 in Georgia time. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is a newest figure uh, from FAO fishery uh, uh, data. The uh, total world production uh, amounted 178.5 million tons. Aquaculture is 46%, capture 54%. Uh, somebody may question why aquaculture less than 50% because many people were informed that aquaculture would exceed 50% of the world fishery production, which is true, but uh, this figure does not include aquatic plants. That's why aquaculture is still less than 50%. Uh, as you can see,
I'm afraid uh, Nomura Sensei is. disconnected from this gym. Okay, let's we wait for a while. Um, hope uh, organizer could uh, get in touch with Nomura Sensei if uh, there is uh, technical problems. Sorry. Can you hear? Okay. Uh, Apologize. I'm, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong. I am compute okay. blind. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, can I continue? Yes. Sorry. Please. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, 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 I'm, so, I'm very sorry. Uh, the, the point here is uh, capture fishery is, is remain a plateau. Whereas aquaculture continue to expand. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, uh, this is top ten marine capture production countries. Uh, already China uh, top. Uh, usually Indonesia comes uh, 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 second, but uh, 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 very recent uh, Peru over to Indonesia. Sometimes it does, usually it does not because as you may imagine, Peru's catch comprises by almost 90% single species, anchovita, which is uh, pretty much if affected by environmental condition like El Nino. Uh, the, the last figure we have is a Peruvian anchovy uh, catch was very, very good. That's why Peru's catch uh, uh, topped Indonesia, which used to be always number two. Uh, 
Uh, next slide, please. Yes, that's what I was going to uh, explain to you. You know, the China always number one, Indonesia, the similar pattern, just uh, because of the difference of scale, uh, magnitude. The Peruvian catch fluctuation is very peculiar, simply as I explained to you, because its catch is consists of only one single species that uh, uh, explain the Peru's catch fluctuate. If anchovy catch is good, Peru catch increase. Japan used to be number one, maybe 30 years ago, not anymore. The, the, the reason Japan's catch uh, decreased is, uh, is because of several reasons, because uh, as you know, the 200 mile zone of the sea region is excluded uh, all Japanese long distance fleets uh, out of the uh, 200 mile zone of the coastal states. That's number one. Number two is uh, those years when Japanese catch was number one in the world, 40% of its catch comprised also single one species, sardine. And sardine catch later uh, decreased very much. Uh, that explains the Japanese catch reduction in recent years. And it remains to be seen when it will increase. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, next slide, please. Uh, let's go to aquaculture. Uh, here, we included uh, plants. Uh, uh, because uh, it, 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 it's uh, uh, aquaculture usually, you know, will, uh, uh, signifies both uh, uh, animal and plant production. China, again, number one, and Indonesia is number two. What is very peculiar for Indonesian aquaculture is, is the majority of the Indonesian aquaculture comprised of seaweed. And uh, 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 in terms of economy, uh, uh, that has to be improved in the future because of the economic gain, because most of the seaweed production, as, as many of you know, the raw material exported and with, uh, without much value addition. That is the, uh, the future uh, 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 task for the improvement of Indonesian aquaculture development and production. Uh, what uh, uh, is very, very significant here uh, is that probably in terms of the volume, uh, more than 70 or 80% of aquaculture comes from Asian countries. Next slide, please. Now, uh, that is very famous FAO table uh, uh, depicting the state of world fisheries. Now, uh, uh, the top is overfished, orange one, and the middle is maximally, maximally sustainable uh, fish, fished, uh, or uh, you can say fully utilized fish stocks. And the, uh, the third one are the underutilized. The trick of this uh, table is, uh, depending on your agenda, you can say uh, as much as, uh, let's say, uh, as much as 85, 80%, or as much as 80% as either fully utilized or overutilized, which gives very bad image to you. On the other hand, uh, you can say that let's say 75% of the world fishery is sustainably utilized and underutilized. Both are not untrue. So when you, uh, you hear some uh, 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 advertisement saying bad, bad figure for world state fishery, uh, you can quote this figure. Uh, you can also say some a uh, good management uh, uh, history or a background in also or citing this figure as well. But, but, but bottom line is overall, our picture is not so good looking 
because the percentage of unsustainable share continue to increase. Uh, that is the tax message we have to remember. Next slide, please. So state of world fishery, to make a long story very short, marine capture production is at a plateau and has been for some years, as you could you saw in the previous slide. More effective conservation management is essential if marine production to be maintained or increased. More production should come from sustainable agriculture. Those three, uh, let's say uh, the uh, uh, common story is well known. Next slide, please. This is a map of Southeast Asian state of fishery and aquaculture. What, uh, 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 what I'd like to say is uh, uh, there's almost no area of high sea. Uh, the, the, the area is surrounded by 200 mile zone of respective coast south there. There's no high sea fishery. So uh, uh, there's not much room for this area to establish regional fishery management organization, RFMO, because most RFMO usually deal with the high sea fishery and the 200 mile zone is under the jurisdiction of the coastal states and coastal states will not give its authority to RFMO over its governance of fishery resources. The second characteristic is, uh, although uh, uh, many of those countries is a very big fishing nation, big, big fishing power, uh, most of them are small scale fishery and a lot of fishermen, usually over capacity of fishing vessel and the fishermen that creates uh, some social problem. And uh, uh, another characteristic is therefore in, in, in the, in the uh, 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 special characteristic of this uh, uh, geographical and uh, uh, demographic nature, uh, there are not uh, uh, other areas so that this area can copy in terms of RFMO. That's why there's not uh, effective RFMO in this area. Next slide, please. Yes, I think I already covered that. Next slide, please. Let's let's uh, talk about some problem uh, uh, prevalent of this area, Southeast Asian area. Uh, first, I'd like to state that uh, insufficient information on fish resources and fishery statistics. Uh, next slide, please. My example is this is a little bit old, old graph, I apologize, but this is the, uh, 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 the data which are provided by Southeast Asia nations to FAO as a fish report. Uh, the uh, light uh, uh, bar represents the uh, catch figure uh, disaggregated by species, which makes sense, of course. The black one is the catch figure reported as not disaggregated by species. Let's say other species or just fish. Uh, that uh, 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 quality of uh, fish catch is not so useful one, as you can see, no scientist will use that figure for stock assessment. And when uh, we, we e, e, e measure the uh, magnitude of the not uh, disaggregated figure catch by Southeast Asia, it 
almost amount more than 10 million tons, which is a very significant amount, not only by absolute volume, but also by percentage. So that is what we think there's a need for data improvement and catch reporting, not only catch reporting, but research. Can you go back to the uh, previous slide, please? Yes. So that is the first point, uh, the right uh, uh, upper hand. And decline fisher resources, I, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that because I'm an expert on that. Some, some other speaker will say that. Lack of effective management uh, and uh, insufficient MSC means monitoring control surveillance, which may lead to IUU fishing very, very commonly known word. Illegal and reported and unregulated fishing. Well, insufficient participation RFM, oh, it is not a case for Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia uh, is a very responsible fishing nation. Uh, 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 Indonesia still has a lot of, lot of uh, homework to do, but uh, uh, for the world standard, I think Indonesia is a very responsible fishing nation. But anyway, other uh, Southeast Asian countries are not like Indonesia. Next slide, please. Next one. Next one, please. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's uh, the general status of fisher resources in Southeast Asia. The the red, orange, bad, green. Okay. Next slide. I I'll skip to that because this is a figure by Kakape, and uh, I think other experts will say uh, we will we'll know it better. Next slide. Yes. So what's the issue and future challenge? We need more effective fishery management. We have to deal with the intervention from environmental consideration. Uh, we have to face fight against IUU. And we also have to face social and economic consideration, which is probably a new agenda for international fisheries and also sustainable aquaculture development. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, probably I have to skip many slides because I'm not so sure if I can finish in 15 minutes. Anyway, uh, the first effective fishery management comprises of very interconnected but different elements, starting with the flag state responsibility. Uh, I think everybody understand what flag state responsibility in, 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 in nutshell, let's say Indonesian fishing vessel is to be controlled by Indonesia. That's very simple. In that case, Indonesia is flag state, okay? Wherever the vessel goes, Indonesia has a responsibility to control the activities, whether on the high sea, in other easy, or within your own easy. Uh, that's that's a flag state responsibility, responsibility. That's a primary responsibility of, of the fishing nation. Limited access, okay, number of the fishing license fishing vessel registration and fishing licenses. It's everybody understand. Right-based fishery management, that is like a co-management, like a from bottom-up approach. Uh, implementing international instruments. Uh, I listed the several uh, technical term, law of the sea issue, uh, law of the sea convention, and the 1995 UN fish stock agreement. I, was uh, head of delegation of Japan for that negotiation. And the FAO Code of Conduct fish, Responsible Fishery, uh, you may have heard of that, that uh, uh, people say it's kind of a constitution of a fish, world fishery. Participating in RFMO. Next slide. Now, uh, 
that is the, the main topic of this, my, my presentation, intervention from environmental consideration, fishery in issue, particularly international fishery issue, cannot be addressed without discussing environmental issue. Now, marine mammals, if your fishery is taking marine mammal, you are in trouble. Same story for sea turtles and seabirds. Well, sea turtle or seabirds are particular bycatch species for particular fishing gear. Uh, so uh, uh, all, not all fishing gear are uh, uh, have to face this problem, but certain species, certain, I'm sorry, certain gear type, like a seabirds, long line fishery, uh, and sea turtle, like a troll, and also long line fishery. Bottom trolling, some environmental uh, group just label bottom trolling as bad and destructive fishing practice. Special management, uh, Indonesia, uh, I think, advanced uh, 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 technique and the notion for special management. You even have uh, DG, Directorate General for Special Management in Kakape, uh, which is not a normal case for other countries, including Japan. Uh, in special management includes marine protected area and marine parks. And also, you may have heard biodiversity conservation beyond national jurisdiction, which is being undertaken by UN uh, uh, Fora, uh, which is going to have the fifth meeting in New York next week. I am going to attend on behalf of Japan, though. What is this is biodiversity conservation beyond national jurisdiction, biodiversity conservation on the high sea, some people do not trust in RFMO dealing with good fisheries. So in order for uh, uh, area-based management tool, they'd like to have a new binding agreement under the law of the sea scheme. That is what BBNG, Biodiversity Conservation Beyond National Decision. Bycatch discard marine debris microplastic, I don't have to mention that. Animal welfare. I think you already know one example is shark finning. Shark finning is a practice of discarding body of shark, but keeping fin only because fin is more expensive. And that is considered as useless practice, wasteful practice, I'm sorry. And some environmental uh, 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 group uh, saying it is in inhumane and unethical. Next slide. This is one example of environmental issue killed one big fishery many years ago. It's, it's, I was incumbent in government office at that time in, in, in working in, in embassy in Japan, Washington, DC. Uh, that is a UN resolution banning large scale drift net fisheries in the Pacific. Uh, those fishery, big large scale fishery was conducted by Japan, Taiwan and Korea, all three big Asian fishing nation. They target squid, no problem for squid resources, but they incidentally catch or bycatch, sometimes marine mammal and salmon, etc. And that aspect killed that fishery. So all RFMO, uh, you can see very famous resolution following this UN resolution saying, banning large-scale drift net fisheries. So this is one example, one topic of environmental issue killed one fishery in the real world. Next slide. Maybe most of your audience knows that don't know, maybe many of 
may overview may not be born that time, but anyway, that's a, many people forget about that. But that's one example. Another example is a tuna dolphin issue, very famous one in the tropical Eastern Pacific. Yellowfin tuna person fishery, circulating dolphin. Yellowfin tuna swim underneath the dolphin. So fishermen target dolphin in order to catch yellowfin tuna. What happened is dolphin drowns and die and environmental risk will not be silent. And almost this fishery was killed, almost killed. Some fisheries still, what still are existing, but what is very significant is this fishery for the sake of tuna management is very, very sound fishery because there's no immature and baby fish beneath that. All, all uh, uh, tuna swimming beneath the dolphin are adult. So as long as dolphin population is safe, and as long as they devise fishing gear by which dolphin can escape, there should be no or, or, or criticism against this fishery. Nonetheless, environmentalist, in radical env environmentalist, uh, despite US government approval, sue this fishery into their own court and they won. Uh, therefore, those fishery conducted by mostly Latin America, uh, predominantly by Mexico, those products to the best of my knowledge, are uh, not marketable in US market. Next slide, please. So this is another issue. One issue can kill the whole fishery. Uh, okay. I have five more minutes. Uh, many of you know what is Washington Convention CITES. Well, the CITES, Originally uh, uh, established in 1972, uh, was targeted for protecting, uh, let's say, a majestic animal, terrestrial animal, uh, such as reno, uh, lion, uh, elephant, etc., etc. Uh, of course, whales were already covered by CITES. But recently, uh, many marine species subject to commercial fishery are being listed, are proposed to be listed. Uh, if you are dealing with CITES, it's a very common story. Uh, what issue is, again, they do not believe in RFMO or fishery management authorities' competence and the willingness in their world to protect those species. That's why they would like to include their agenda, agenda species into CITES appendix. If it is listed in appendix one, all trade is prohibited. If it is listed appendix two, even though trade is not prohibited, by nature, it requires export permit with a proof of non detrimental effect, which is very hard for administration to issue. Therefore, generally speaking, usually they prohibit export. So it's the same effect as Appendix 1. What is very risky for fishery world is once one species, particular species is listed either Appendix 1 or Appendix 2 by voting to third majority vote. If you like to delist that species out of the list out of the species, you have to have another, again, two third majority, which is in practice impossible. So once the species is listed, it will be usually remain forever. I never seen any example of marine species 
which has been listed and later to be delisted. So it's very dangerous. Uh, shark is very popular menu for environmentalists to list those species, okay? Also, Napoleon fish is a species probably Indonesia suffered a lot, uh, but anyway. Uh, next slide. Shark, I talk about shark finning. Seabird, bycatch tissue, I talk about it. Next slide. Sea turtle, deep sea troll fishery. Some people say just trolling deep sea troll fishery is a bad fishery. Next slide. Now, fight against IUU fishing. Anyway, uh, what I'd like to highlight on this is only one agreement, the first one, FAO agreement on post-state measure. What is post-state measure? Post-state measure is when Indonesian vessel visit Japanese port, let's say for landing. In that case, Jap Jap Japan, Japanese government is a port state. And, and num first of all, Indonesian vessel will have to ask the permission from Japanese government to have access to port facility, number two. Uh, same uh, the permission uh, for landing, plus, Japanese government has authority to, in, to inspect the vessel. So it is a very strong deterrent for IOU fishery, probably the most effective measure. Uh, okay. Uh, I praise Indonesia for this because Indonesia uh, became a contracting party for this agreement well in advance of Japan. And uh, that's a very, very responsible attitude on the part of Indonesia. Next slide. Okay. Well, another uh, instrument to fight against IU fishing, if your global, global record of fishing vessel, why do we need that? Well, uh, the bad guy usually changed flag once it was detected. So what we call flag hopping, they just change flag. In that case, their fishing number uh, change as well. On this global record of fishing scheme by using IMO number, that remains the same. Therefore, it's easier to track record, the vessel record. And that is very, very good. Uh, catch documentation scheme. I'll skip on that. Next slide. Uh, okay, social and economic consideration. I will say only one thing for, about social, that is uh, humane nature, child labor, uh, like uh, 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 forced labor or human trafficking. That has become a very uh, important element for fishery to be uh, regarded as responsible fishery. Uh, recently, Marine Stewardship Council, a very famous eco-labeling scheme, uh, incorporated this element into their uh, uh, certification process. Okay. Fishery subsidy, fortunately, we just concluded our agreement in Geneva, didn't we, about a month ago, okay? Um, I mean, in a nutshell, the bad, the bad subsidy uh, leading to overcapacity and IUU would be prohibited, hopefully. Next slide. I think this is my last slide. I, I'm sorry, I exceeded three minutes. I just listed the ski, the element of uh, necessary, uh, 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 necessary uh, consideration for aquaculture development, which will be more elaborated uh, by, by, by free, uh, uh, subsequent speakers. So I will just uh, uh, listed a couple of uh, uh, items for just itemizing that. Next slide. My very last one. 
that gives a future projection, aquaculture continue to increase and continue to be relied on increased fish production. That is the blue one. While orange one, the capture fishery, we cannot expect much production increase in the future. I think that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to answer any question later. Thank you very much, Telemakasi. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nomura Sensei. Uh, you're exactly using perfect time, <laughs> uh, 3 15. Um, thank you very much, uh, Nomura Sensei, uh, for a very comprehensive um, discussion on uh, fisheries issues. Uh, in the next session, we will hear uh, for the aquaculture in detail. But uh, let me highlight some interesting part that I, uh, I think. Uh, could be an issue for discussion later on. Uh, uh, that uh, we we see uh, we we saw that uh, capture fisheries uh, is really challenging related uh, with um, management issues. Uh, even though it uh, share much of the production, uh, particularly for the fish, uh, but uh, if very dynamics uh, as. Uh, we can see from the case of Peru and Indonesia, as uh, Nomura Sensei said, um, uh, last few years, uh, Indonesia placed second, but now placed third uh, due to the uh, single species production in uh, uh, Peru that uh, very influenced much by the environment. And uh, there are many issues uh, deal with the effective uh, fisheries management, whether related to the flag state, right-based, probably this is very important issues in Indonesia, right-based issues, and some international uh, international institution issues uh, that I think uh, could be part of our discussion uh, later on. And uh, I think uh, some social issues uh, also has been highlighted. Uh, I, I found a very nice comment in the uh, chat session, but maybe Nomura Sensei later on will uh, explore about how uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19 uh, situation uh, influenced the fisheries later, maybe we can uh, further discuss. Before we are going to the discussion yeah. session, I would like yeah. to invite the next uh, speakers. Uh, our beloved uh, Prof. Prof. Uh, Paromin, nice to see you even virtually uh, today. Uh, always, have Paromin. Nice, always nice to see you, uh, Dr. Swadi. Yeah, yeah um, we will hear uh, from uh, Paromin for the next session. Uh, we know well Paromin as a minister or also as a professor in IPB. And also for our department, it's very important person uh, uh, who has a sign in our building uh, uh, for Pat Rahman. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I would like uh, to directly the session to Pat uh, introducing us uh, about the sustainable aquaculture management uh, related with the issue of uh, global environmental change, particularly the climate change. Uh, the time is your part of me, uh, and also the same. Uh, you have uh, 30 to 40 minutes uh, to share uh, with us. Uh, many of participants all over many in from many countries today. Uh, time is your part of me. Thank you, Dr. Swardi, uh, Honorable Rector of University Gajah Mada, represented by my best friend, Dr. I Madiandi Arsana. The Director of International Affairs, the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, the Head of Department of Histories, uh, Professor Alim Islan Islanespio, the Chair of Summer Course, Dr. Uh, Murwan Toko, uh, Professor Ishiro Nomura, all the participants and ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, may God peace, mercy, and blessing be upon all of us. 
and good afternoon for audience in Indonesia as well as ASEAN countries, but uh, good day for uh, participants uh, or, or, or in the all corner of the world. Yeah. As assigned by or requested by the organizing committee, my topic of the share of today is sustainable aquaculture management uh, as the coping strategies to climate uh, change. Uh, next, please. Do I have to operate by myself, Dr. Swaji, or hello? Oh. Do I have to operate uh, my slide uh, uh, presentation by myself or from from the Gazamada? <laughs> I think that which one is more convenient uh, for you, Pa? Okay, I will be just by myself. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so the outline of my presentation will be number one. Uh, uh, I would like to share with you about the increasing roles of aquaculture and both in no. economic development and human civilization. Sorry, then I will move on. Yes. Would you mind to share screen? Oh, yeah, already share screen. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. With the Dr. Swadi, yep. can you see my screen? Okay, clearly. Okay then, okay, very good. So as requested by the organization committee that the topic of my share uh, in this summer course is sustainable aquaculture management as the coping strategies to climate changes. And it will cover uh, six what we call topic. Number one is uh, I would like to share with you about the increasing rules of aquaculture in economic development and human civilization. Then uh, uh, number two is about the dynamic of all aquaculture development in both uh, in the world and in Indonesia. The third one will be the problems and challenges of aquaculture development. And then the fourth one will be impacts of global climate change on aquaculture. And the, the fifth topic will be the, develop, the, the development roadmap for a productive, efficient, inclusive, environmentally friendly, and sustainable aquaculture. I hope the fifth chapter will be the dream for all of us in the world about uh, the future of aquaculture, which is productive, efficient, inclusive, environmentally friendly, and sustainable. And last but not least, I'd like to share with you about the mitigation and adaptation measures in aquaculture sector to cope with global climate change. Okay, let me start with the increasing rules of aquaculture and economic development and human civilization. Uh, for me, there are at least uh, five major reasons uh, and already empirical fact why aquaculture uh, rules and function uh, keep increasing over time from year to year. Uh, number one is in the world that's characterized by uh, FUCA or volatility, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Okay, so in other words, the, our world is actually very unpredictable and dis, 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 uh, disruptive. So few things are predictable, yeah. But one thing that can be assured is that the insatiable demand for ever, for ever higher quality of products and services will continue to rise, to rise while the availability of natural resources may be to satisfy a demand is decreasing or limited. This is the problem of humanity actually. So the demand of uh, you know, human being for food, uh, minerals and other commodities increasing, keep increasing, while the capacity of our earth to produce that kind of resources and commodities, if not limited, decreasing. So this is a big problem, yeah? especially in the capitalism era where greed of uh, human being is actually as the you know, leading, leading the dynamism of uh, humanity. 
So the increasing demand for higher quality product and services is driven by the increasing number of human population, as well as the quality of life or the purchasing power. And last, last but not least, certainly millennial lifestyle, which is very hegemonic, consumptive, and so forth and so forth. So this is the what we call uh, global population growth there, yeah, published by UN. That as you can see, the there are two three scenario: low growth uh, rate, uh, and then medium growth rate, and the last one is high growth rate. So if we take the medium assumption, then the population in 2050 will be about uh, eight billion uh, people. And in 2000, uh, uh, in 2100, or the, the end of the 21st century, the number of population of the world will be about 11 billion. Yeah, right, now it's about 7.7 uh, .7 billion uh, citizen on Earth. So what I mean uh, by demand or basic uh, of human being is not only human basic needs like uh, food, clothing, housing, health services, and education but also secondary and tertiary needs such as luxury goods, transportation, entertainment, and tourism. And the development sector that produces food actually consists of agriculture, animal husbandry, capture fisheries, and aquaculture. And the second reason, the supply or production capacity of, of, of what they call uh, the sector that produce food uh, commodities or raw materials, including capture fisheries, animal husbandry, and agriculture are mostly leveling off or declining. For example, in the case of capture fisheries, as we know from FAO data, that the production capacity or maximum sustainable yield of the marine fisheries, capture fisheries, has been leveling off actually since early 1980s. Meanwhile, Many stocks in many areas of the world have also been overfished or at the brink of extension. Yeah? The similar situation actually has been also occurring in animal husbandry, agriculture sector, due to, due to decreasing agriculture land and further degradation and uh, 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 other factors. And the third reason, uh, the global climate change, environmental degradation, and volatile global geopolitics. For example, the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Actually, the major threats uh, about the war is if US and China, uh, which are the uh, two superpowers of the world, uh, are in the war, that make uh, our, what you call, the life will be very, very difficult because uh, make the productivity and production volume of almost all commodities, product and services uh, tend to be declining. So to meet such a, a, a increasing demand, uh, I'm sure we have to work very hard and on collaborative manner in order for all uh, uh, development sector especially aquaculture, uh, should do their best to increase their productivity, efficiency, competitiveness, and sustainability. The fourth reason why the role of aquaculture will be increasing is that the fact that by definition, aquaculture produces not only fin fish, crustacean, mollusks, and seaweed, but also intervertebrate and other flora and fauna. Therefore, aquaculture is actually a development sector that produce not only commodities as source for animal protein, as uh, perceived uh, right now by majority of uh, people in the world, uh, like uh, fin fish, crustacean, and molas, but also produce number one commodities as a source of mineral, vitamins, and carbohydrate. So I will uh, uh, show you later on about the uh, uh, what we call evidence that actually rice is already been you know. Uh, has already been cultivated in the marine ecosystem. Number two is commodities like invertebrates, microalgae, mar marcoalgae as source of raw materials or bioactive compounds for functional food and beverages, pharmaceutical industries, painting and other industries. 
and the, the third commodities is a, a source of biofuel and other commodities. So this is the, the definition of aquaculture defined by FAO. Yeah. So as you can see, aquaculture is farming or production of fin fish, crustacean, mollusks, invertebrates, algae and plant and other organisms through hatching and rearing in aquatic ecosystems. So in my understanding, based on that uh, definition, then the uh, output of aquaculture uh, uh, activities is not only conventional, you know, product like, you know, animal protein, yeah, seaweed, the uh, ornamental fishes, uh, for, uh, what we call or jewelry, yeah, but also known or future rules and function, including algae-based feed, pharmaceutical, and so forth and so forth. Uh, this is just give you to give you example and enthusiasm that. Aquaculture is indeed a panacea for the future, yeah? because uh, we can, as, as, as I said, extract the marine uh, biotech compound from aquatic organism yeah? to produce uh, 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 you know, many industries, including pharmacy. Okay, and I always uh, give this example that seaweed, if we process seaweed, uh, uh, like uh, carrageenan uh, based seaweed, including Uhema. Uh, Actually, the industrial tree of seaweed is uh, 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 what we call uh, uh, so many, yeah? and this is just example. Yeah, the production of what we call uh, cosmetics, yeah, or wellness uh, produced by Indonesian company, yeah? uh, and the uh, uh, raw materials of this uh, what we call uh, cosmetics is coming from seaweed and microalgae, other microalgae. And this is the example of the bioactive compound of uh, snack head fish. Yeah? This is the, you know, the, the, the utilization of actually waste, yeah? the carapace of uh, crustacean yeah? for uh, producing uh, hitosan or hytin. And Indonesia uh, is well known as the largest producer of salt, per, salt sea per, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, materials. Unfortunately, we are not advanced yet in what we call processing and packaging. Yeah, so we still mostly export uh, in the form of raw materials. And this is the the thing that I would like to share with you. In the last uh, uh, two decades, uh, China has been working very hard and very smartly, yeah? and, and and has been able, as I said, to cultivate. Yeah? rise in the marine uh, environment. So I think with the genetic engineering by DNA sequencing and DNA recombinant in the future, not only rice, but other uh, uh, food crop like, uh, you know, corn or soybean also uh, what we call, uh, will be able, would be able to be cultivated in marine environment. And the last reason that aquaculture of micro Algae, macroalgae, aquatic plants, and other organisms that can absorb CO2 and other greenhouse gases can be a significant thing yeah, of the greenhouse gases to mitigate global climate change. So I would like to share the dynamic of aquaculture development in the world and in Indonesia. So basically the message of this table as Professor uh, Isimura already presented that the uh, production of capture fisheries, as you can see from this table, is actually uh, to be leveling off or stagnant, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, production of aquaculture, you know, keep increasing over time or from year uh, to the other year, okay? And this is uh, the other data, yeah? This is, uh, you know, latest data until 2020. Yeah? Okay, so I don't want to bore you. This is the what they call uh, production of aquaculture based on region of the world. Yeah, as you can see, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor, Professor Rumura is right that the China and Asia actually produce more than 75% of total aquaculture production in the world. Yeah. So this is the you know uh, production of aquaculture by uh, species or commodities. Yeah. Uh, basically, I just derived all this data from the latest uh, what we call 
FAO publication about state of the world fisheries and aquaculture. Okay, uh, this is just background. To, and how about Indonesia? Yeah? So Indonesia actually the paradise of aquaculture yeah, or can be a leading nation of aquaculture uh, in since 19, 2009, Indonesia has been the second largest producer of aquaculture just behind China. The reason is because of geographical, geographical fact. Eh? As you can see from this uh, map, that 77% 70, 70, of Indonesian area is in the form of the, in the, of the sea. Uh, uh, meanwhile, even inland area, okay, 28% of uh, Indonesian land, land actually is in the form of freshwater ecosystem, uh, such as uh, lakes, uh, rivers, and so forth and so forth. So Indonesia is indeed in terms of potential of aquaculture production will be is the largest. As you can see, the total production potential of aquaculture in Indonesia is about 100 million metric ton per year. And by 2020, we just produce in total about uh, 14.85 million metric ton, yeah. So, which is only about 15% of the total production potential. That means the room for expansion of aquaculture investment, business, and development is very what they call uh, what they call big, yeah. So we invite investors and business, you know, people to come to Indonesia to you know develop aquaculture on a sustainable basis. So this is the trend of aquaculture production and capture fisheries in our country, Indonesia. As you can see, the blue line representing the aquaculture production, as I said, keep increasing, although uh, from 2017 to 2000, what we call uh, 19 or 20, the production of aquaculture is declining. But all in all, the trend of aquaculture production in Indonesia is uh, increasing, while capture fisheries tend to be, you know, stagnant or leveling off. So this is the potential areas of aquaculture. Talking about aquaculture, we have three categories in marine environment. We call it aquaculture, and in coastal ecosystem or coastal land, brackish water aquaculture, and then in, in freshwater ecosystem, including pond, in the water. Uh, at the field, the uh, uh, lakes, reservoir, and uh, river. Yeah? So this in Indonesia indeed is one of the uh, highest potential country in terms of uh, mariculture production. And this is the distribution of mariculture, brackish water, and freshwater aquaculture area uh, in 34 provinces of Indonesia. This is the existing aquaculture land uh, at least in 2020. So as you can see from this map, uh, what they call the, the largest country uh, area in terms of uh, uh, aquaculture land is Kalimantan actually about 25.7 percent, yeah? uh, followed by uh, Sumatra, Sulawesi, Java, and so forth. And this is the composition of uh, 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 aquaculture commodities, Professor Nisum uh, Nomura is right that the uh, uh, more than 70 percent of uh, aquaculture commodities in Indonesia is in the form of seaweed. Yeah, and this is the top 10 uh, what they call aquaculture commodities produced by Indonesia. Number one, seaweed, number two, tilapia, and shrimp come number four. Uh, by the way, Professor. Nomura that the uh, shrimp uh, export value actually comprised about 40%. So from 8 point, sorry, from 5.2 billion US dollar uh, export value of Indonesian fisheries, 40% coming from shrimp. Yeah? So very dominant. Yeah? Although the volume uh, of production is number four, but the export value of shrimp is number one. Yeah? This is the, the distribution of aquaculture production by province. As you can see, South Sulawesi or Sulawesi Selatan is number one, uh, contributing about 25% of the total aquaculture production. So this is the distribution of aquaculture production by island, uh, Bali, Nusa Tenggara, 
number one is uh, as I said the Sulawesi Island. Yeah? This is uh, I just want to. This is just an illustration. This is a top, top priority what we call species or commodities for mariculture in Indonesia from seaweed, grouper until lobster and abalone, yeah, very uh, pricey, you know, uh, commodities. On the brackish water pond, uh, number one, of course, is Faname shrimp or white shrimp, yeah, followed by mud crab and so forth. Uh, milkfish, Indonesia is the largest producer of milkfish, not only seaweed, yeah. And this is the freshwater aquaculture commodities. Number one, tilapia, and then uh, pangasius or dori or patin, yeah and catfish, uh, eel also, you know, very important commodities in Indonesia. So this is to give you, a, you know, a, a feel that uh, uh, why Indonesia is the largest producer of paraginan and agarosa seaweed, because uh, uh, our, uh, you know, coastal dwellers are very active yeah, in doing seaweed aquaculture and seaweed aquaculture actually produce Profit quite uh, quite what they call uh, uh, significant and profitable. Yeah, this is the tulang bawang Lampung. This is what they call success story of Indonesia during uh, President Suharto era because one uh, company uh, operating about twenty thousand hectare at the time probably the largest in the world. Yeah, uh, in in nineteen nineties. Yeah, this is the til tilapia farming in Tobalik, North Sumatra. So 75% of uh, uh, what they call uh, export value of tilapia from Indonesia coming from this lake Tobalik in North Sumatra. And as uh, Professor Nomura uh, presented that Indonesia since 2009 has been the second largest producer of aquaculture in the world just right after China. And this is the what they call the rank of uh, what they call Indonesia as a producer of uh, uh, aquaculture mm -hmm. commodity. Indonesian fish consumption also keep increasing over time. Okay, this is the export value and volume ex export of fisheries from Indonesia. Yeah. Number one, uh, you know, shrimp in terms of value. Yeah. Number two, tuna skipjack. Number three, speed uh, cuttlefish octopus. Number four, crabs, including swimming crab. And the fifth one, in terms of uh, value, is uh, seaweed. Yeah. So this is the destination of Indonesian fisheries export. Yeah. Uh, number one is uh, United States of America in terms of uh, value, but in terms of volume, China is number one. So although we export quite significant fisheries, commodities, and product, but right. up until now, Indonesia still ranked number 10 or 8 right now, yeah, in terms of the export value. <laughs> <laughs> Problems and challenges to aquaculture development in Indonesia. So, so if I can summarize, actually, the problem and challenges of aquaculture development in Indonesia can be categorized into four groups uh, from economic point of view, social environment and institution. From economic point of view, most of uh, aquaculture un business unit or operation in Indonesia are traditional and small scale. The second problem is about decreasing availability of fish meal based feed uh, considered as a top quality feed and increasing price. Uh, it is uh, worth it to, to be noted that about 60% of production cost is coming from feed. And then the third problem is limited access to capital, be it uh, bank credit, uh, fiscal allocation from the government, and so forth and so forth. The next problem is inadequate logistic system and infrastructure. And from social uh, aspect, we have also problems in limited uh, in accessing the technology, especially the you know small scale uh, uh, culturist or fish farmer. We have also about quality, problem about quality assurance and security, low quality of human resources, and then from environmental problem, uh, uh, sorry, from environmental aspect, we have uh, ecosystem degradation, decreasing water quality, fish disease outbreak, excess carrying capacity, and last but not least, of course, the repercussion of global climate change on aquaculture. And we have also problem about the institution. Yeah? 
this is just one example in Indonesia up until now we have about 900,000 hectare of shrimp pond yeah but as you can see uh, the modern one is only 7% or uh, intensive uh, shrimp aquaculture yeah uh, about 70% of shrimp aquaculture in, in Indonesia actually is in the form of traditional uh, you know operation and small scale operation so this is the just to give you example the similarity about challenge and problem in Indonesia also reflected or similar in Asian region yeah, from disease production cost especially feed yeah, and then uh, seed stock quality and affordability and so forth and so forth so problem about certification also we still have yeah. so let me talk about the impact of global climate change on aquaculture so as we already understand that uh, uh, global warming or global climate change actually the world phenomena where the what they call the the temperature of the the globe yeah uh, keep increasing over time yeah and the cause of uh, increasing uh, uh, earth temperatures is both because the accumulation of uh, of uh, greenhouse uh, gases especially uh, carbon yeah, and so forth and so forth so that make uh, like the uh, greenhouse uh, function yeah to to trap the what they call the heat of the sun which actually without you know without the greenhouse effect it would uh, transfer into in uh, out of the atmosphere and this is the empirical data that it is indeed right that the global emission of co2 keep increasing over time since 1965 i had the data yeah? and then the this is the largest uh, emitter the, the uh, of in, in the world number one is usa in terms of uh, uh, co2 emission per person per day uh, followed by germany and indonesia actually uh, emit only 0 0.8 tons eh, of co2 per person per day eh. so we are still uh, you know actually friendly country in terms of uh, emitting uh, co2 into our atmosphere this is the graph that uh, showing you about the increasing what we call concentration of co2 yeah in our atmosphere yeah so the impact yeah or the outcome of increasing co2 concentration in in our atmosphere is indeed uh, the increasing uh, temperature of our earth yeah as you can see from uh, 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 1110 uh, just right after the the industrial the first industrial re revolution so this is the uh, what they call risk yeah? uh, that may be uh, resulted from global climate change yeah? from food sector, water, ecosystem, and, and so forth. So this is the socio-economic and economic impact of climate change yeah? from the cost of uh, you know, coastal areas to rising in sea levels yeah? uh, uh, and so forth and so forth. This is the uh, uh, threat of climate change into human uh, health, yeah. and this is this is very important. What they call uh, research result yeah, from UK Hadley Institute, the climate center, that if the temperature of our globe increase by one centigrade, then the capacity of our Earth to produce uh, food will be reduced by 10%. This is very, very what they call alarming. Yeah? So, so data we have to join hand in hand, yeah? uh, the citizen of the citizen of the world to combat uh, what we call uh, the possibility of uh, uh, global warming to happen. So this is the general what we call uh, uh, information about the impact of global climate change on fisheries and aquaculture. Yeah? So, uh, for example, the greenhouse gases accumulation and global warming will change about ocean currents, El Nino southern uh, oscillation, sea level rise, rainfall, river flows, and so forth and so forth. And the areas that will be affected is production and ecology, yeah? 
and then fishing, aquaculture, for surface operation also will be impacted, and then communities and livelihoods also will be what we call uh, receiving, uh, you know, a negative impact uh, from global climate change. And last but not least, actually, is the impact on 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 uh, society and economy as well. So, if I can more be more focused on aquaculture, the impact of climate change on aquaculture actually can be direct and also indirect, right? So direct effect uh, includes influencing the physical and psychological of psycholo physiology of fin fish and shellfish stocks in production system. The indirect impact is in the form of changes in ecosystem productivity and structure, input supplies and product prices, uh, fish meal and fish oil costs and other goods and services required by aquaculture producers. Yeah? And this is the what they call the spatial distribution yeah? or disparity uh, among regions in the world yeah? about the impact of climate change on fisheries and aquaculture. And this is uh, the impact of climate change on uh, our ocean ecosystems basically in the form of, uh, you know, uh, warming uh, seawater and then less reduced oxygen and more acidic or ocean acidification. And this is the mechanisms uh, why what they call uh, uh, global warming can affect or can result in ocean acidification. This is my second last, uh, what they call topic, how we develop yeah, aquaculture, which is uh, productive, efficient, inclusive, and environmental friendly and sustainable. Okay, so in in summary, I think a sustainable and prosperous aquaculture can be uh, represented or presented in this one system diagram. So if you see this uh, system diagram, uh, we have output that we all expect or development result from increased productivity so that because the potential of aquaculture production of Indonesia is the largest one in Indonesia, in the world. So it is what they call, uh, what they call logical. If one day Indonesia can overtake China in terms of production volume and productivity. And then the second objective of aquaculture development is to uh, meet or fulfill the national demand or domestic demand of Indonesia. And of course, uh, we would like also to increase our export value, yeah? of course, on a sustainable basis. And then the third output, uh, we hope, can increase the contribution of aquaculture uh, development, investment, and business to our economy, be it in the form of gross domestic product or GDP, in the form of export value and employment, uh, what they call em employment. Uh, uh, opportunities. Number four is uh, we would like to make sure that all fish farmer or aquaculturists or and stakeholders will be living uh, on prosperous species. And then the fifth uh, key performance indicator. Sorry, uh, I forget to make uh, in red box uh, about inclusive development. And last but not least, the key performance indicator of sustainable aquaculture is uh, sustainable uh, sustainability in order to achieve that uh, those uh, six key performance indicators i think in indonesia and i believe in other countries of the world yeah, that basically we have uh, three programs or policies number one is revitalization of existing aquaculture business unit what i mean by revitalization is uh, human effort to increase productivity efficiency, uh, competitiveness, inclusiveness, and sustainability of aquaculture business unit. The second program is the extensification. I'm meaning we have to open up all the potential areas of aquaculture, be it in marine environment, coastal environment, as well as in freshwater ecosystem. And the third uh, major program will be diversification of uh, cultured species. So for example, in Indonesia until now, we only uh, 
uh, what we call cultivate or culture about 25 species. While China right now already uh, been able to culture about 125 uh, species. So this is very ironical because Indonesia is the, the largest bi marine biodiversity in the world. So meaning the source of species to be culture is the biggest in the world. And yet up until now, we Indonesian only uh, culture uh, 25 species, while China already uh, culture 125 species. So from positive thinking point of view, meaning the room for expansion, expansion for aquaculture business and investment in Indonesia is indeed the very huge. And the, those three programs uh, can be run yeah, by applying aquaculture, uh, that we have to select aquaculture location or aquaculture sites must be in accordance or comply with spatial plan of any region, be it in the district level or kabupaten, in, in the province, as well as national level. And then the second recipe is to make sure that all aquaculture business must meet or fulfill the economic of scale. The third uh, recipe or ingredient is for aquaculture uh, business unit must apply so-called integrated supply chain management system. And then the fourth recipe is applying best aquaculture practices and innovation. The fifth uh, recipe is enhancing and uh, pro processing industry and marketing. This is very important because, because if you able to produce uh, more what we call aquaculture uh, production, but you cannot uh, market this product or you cannot uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, process them into value added product, then uh, at the end of the day, uh, your business will be will be bankrupt, yeah, or fail, yeah. And then the sixth recipe is to make sure that development intensity or rate of aquaculture in any region, be it in, be, be it in micro environment like in the case of pond, or at district level, province level, must be you know must be less than the current capacity of that region, okay. And then the seventh, what we call uh, recipe is uh, we have to establish a conducive climate investment or uh, is of doing business. And last but not least, of course, is that uh, political and uh, economic policies, including spatial planning, uh, monetary and fiscal policies, yeah, uh, uh, and so forth and so forth, must be conducive. Yeah. And we have uh, three what we call types of aquaculture uh, investment, business and development opportunities. Number one is in marine environment, we call it mariculture. In the case of Indonesia, the uh, top species that already been culture and in the near future will be you know, more lucrative is from grouper, baramandi, and lobster, uh, euhema seaweed. And in brackish water, number one species is uh, Faname shrimp, followed by giant tiger pond, mud crab, milkfish, salinita, tilapia, glaceria, uh, seaweed, and so forth. And on freshwater ecosystem, we have tilapia, tilapia pangasius, clarias, and ornamental fish. So, so what the uh, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries right now already issued the policies, all the aquaculture business units, as I said, must be done yeah, on integrated manner, not only on, on farm activities, but also on the upstream and downstream you know, industry activities. So this is to give you example about the target or, or, or plan of our government in terms of aquaculture product production by commodities or species. Number one is shrimp. By 2024, we expect the volume production of shrimp, culture shrimp, is about 2 million metric tons. Right now, uh, we only produce about 900,000 metric tons. That's according to the government data. But according to the private sector data, it's only 550,000 tons. Eh? And then followed by seaweed, milkfish, grouper, and uh, 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 
mitigation. This is my last topic, Dr. Swadi, yeah, about mitigation and adaptation measure in aquaculture sector in order to cope with global climate change. So as we already understand that uh, mitigation in, in, in terms of uh, global climate change is human effort to reduce or if possible eliminate yeah, the, the, the what they call emission of uh, greenhouse gases. Yeah. So Indonesia is very committed, at least on paper, yeah, that uh, by 2020, actually, yeah, we uh, should be able to reduce 26% of uh, CO2 emission if with the you know, help of international communities, actually in 2022, we should be able to reduce the uh, carbon emission by 41%. Yeah? And Indonesia also has promulgated relevant legal and policy instruments, including the National Action Plan on Greenhouse Gases Emissions Reduction, as stipulated in President's Regulation Number 61-2011. Yeah? And also greenhouse inventory through presidential regulation uh, number 71, 2011. This is the scheme or development approach of Indonesian government in reducing uh, what they call uh, greenhouse uh, gas, gas uh, emission. So this is uh, the uh, emission reduction target or plan uh, per sector in forestry and peatland, agriculture, energy and transportation waste, and this is uh, uh, the common approach how to what they call uh, uh, reduce carbon emission or greenhouse gas emission from fisheries and aquaculture sector. But uh, the presidential decree number 61, 2011, uh, actually explained about the target uh, of of a carbon uh, emission reduction from marine and fishery sector in Indonesia. This is the common approach of adaptation, what they call uh, measures yeah, uh, to climate change. Yeah. So this is the, what they call uh, not only aquaculture, but also fishery. So you can select yeah, which one is adaptation measure, which is suitable for aquaculture sector. Yeah. For example, if the impact is a uh, reduced yield, and then the adaptation measures should be we have to produce uh, higher value markets, and then in this uh, what we call fishing effort, safe aquaculture, non carnivorous commodities, and so forth and so forth. Yeah, uh, I don't want to bore you, so I just read this one. And uh, this is important because aquaculture is a production uh, system of flora and fauna in control environment. So it may, it may be a better what they call uh, opportunities to adapt to climate change. But when uh, the operation of aquaculture is in open uh, pond or marine environment, and then the effect of uh, global climate change on you know, the, the, the open environment must be uh, carefully controlled and addressed, okay? So, so my suggestion then, if uh, aquaculture sector uh, expected as what they call the uh, sector that can help uh, combating a global climate change, and then we have to you know, increase the aquaculture production of herbivorous species, and also uh, uh, molas and uh, algae, uh, microalgae and macro, macro algae, okay? So this is the, what they call uh, 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 figure or picture that can give you what they call inspiration about the cultivation of uh, seaweed yeah, and molas. And, and the, my last suggestion will be to what they call cultivate microalgae as source of biofuel yeah, because at that scale, yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, cultivation or uh, culture of microalgae uh, can function as carbon sink. Yeah? And as I said, uh, at lab, lab, skill, lab, lab skill, actually, we have been successful in Malaysia at IPB Bogor, yeah? uh, 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 
the researchers is lead the uh, professor Musija Kaware. We have already isolated or able to identify about at least 13 species of microalgae that contain a hydrocarbon compound, yeah, which is source for biofuel. So four main species of uh, microalgae in uh, marine environment of Indonesia, including nanochlorosis of ulata, contain about 24% of hydrocarbons, and dismiss 22%, torella 20%, and dunaila salina 15%. Yeah. So this is the lab scale production of microalgae for biofuel. So indeed, uh, uh, from technological point of view, we will be ready to produce uh, biofuel from microalgae, but from commercial or market or economic point of view, not yet, because the cost of producing this biofuel from microalgae is still very high, about 15,000 rupiah per liter, yeah, while uh, the, the, the price of, of uh, uh, gasoline is only seven, seven or 8,000 rupiah. So if the government is serious, to increase the what they call contribution of renewable energy in our national energy mix, this kind of innovation actually should be subsidized or or, or, or supported in at least in five years. Yeah? So this is uh, uh, our what they call big plan. If Indonesia is able to open up about two million hectare of coastal areas for uh, you know, culturing or cultivating microalgae, then according to what they call gross estimation, we can produce about 2, billion, two million barrel of oil. Yeah. While the, the the demand, national demand for oil, right now, Dr. Swadish, only 1.4 billion, eh, 1.4 million, uh, what they call barrel of oil. So meaning we, we, we will be surplus. So, but right in the last 15 years, Indonesia imported oil and gas is about 400,000, uh, 400 trillion rupiah. Yeah, so that's make uh, our fiscal space uh, very limited because our what we call a state budget is has been allocated for importing, you know, uh, uh, oil and gas. I think that's what uh, can be shared, uh, Dr. Swadi. I hope it will be useful and enlighten you to be in spirit to use aquaculture sector as a panacea, not only for reducing or halting global climate change, but also to establish uh, uh, food security, uh, 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 community prosperity, and so forth and so forth. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Pak Rohmin. Um, I didn't stop you uh, because I believe uh, you only take a uh, five minutes <laughs> uh, for uh, the time, but we still have enough time for discussion. Um, I also invite again uh, Nomura to join us uh, for a discussion uh, session, but just to remind uh, a few notes uh, from Pak Rohmin that um, we have to think about uh, how to fulfill um, Probably, as we know that uh, in 2050, we have about uh, 10 million people, uh, 10 billion people that um, we found the possibility of uh, aquaculture uh, to uh, support some source of uh, food. And even uh, the last uh, presentation, uh, the last slide, uh, Parahmin said the potential for energy resources. But uh, we also hear the challenges uh, the ch few challenges in aquaculture, uh, including the issue of uh, uh, climate change will affect whether directly or indirect. But there are also some solutions that uh, suggested by Pa Rohmin, whether through revitalization, extension, or diversification through eight receipts I heard, uh, and including uh, some issues related with the mitigation of uh, climate change. I will invite uh, some participants to directly discuss to, with uh, Prof. Nomura and Prof. Rahmin. Uh, you may raise your hand and I will invite you to directly speak uh, to our speakers, please.
Is there any? There are several people, Dr. Suwadi, ask yep. a question through chat. Yes, you may yep. read the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, while waiting for uh, the participant uh, directly speak to the presenter, I would like uh, to check the uh, chat room. Uh, the first uh, for uh, uh, Nomura Sensei, uh, there are there is one question from. Uh, Kamenko Marves, I believe uh, there is one uh, from Kamenko Marves. Uh, he or she would like to know the situation of uh, fisheries uh, during the pandemic. Uh, please uh, update uh, the information uh, and what's the challenge uh, that uh, probably not the challenge, we know the challenge, uh, but probably uh, the new fisheries uh, uh, for after the pandemic, uh, probably uh, Nomura would like to share about that one. Uh, and I also read the uh, second question uh, from Pandi Alamsa. Uh, these are from Sulawesi, I believe. Uh, uh, he's asking about uh, some this concerning also the social issues in fisheries, uh, particularly related uh, to the. Uh, how to say uh, the uh, patron client in uh, fisheries. This is a big issue in many of small scale fisheries uh, in, I believe in not only in Indonesia, in many of uh, developing countries uh, face uh, a challenge of uh, uh, patron client, client issues. Uh, uh, Pak Rohmin also could share about this. I believe uh, Pak Rohmin uh, know much also about these issues in Indonesian case. The third question is uh, coming from uh, Ganesh. Um, I hope Ganesh is here uh, and could directly share with us. Ganesh, could you share uh, directly to the speakers? Yes. Yeah, you, you may uh, direct talk, uh, talk to the speakers uh, concern your uh, issues. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is, is my voice clear? Yeah, very clear. Okay, uh, I have question. The first one is for Nomura Sensei. I want to ask about why China is leading in the fisheries production in the first place now in the world because I, I want to know what makes them is the biggest one. And the second one uh, uh, for Mr. Rohmin, is it possible for Indonesia to uh, maximize the potential of saltwater aquaculture? Because right now in Indonesia is mostly just uh, depend on the practice on like shrimp, uh, for example, Fanami shrimp or maybe inland culture or something like that. I think that is, I want to be asked. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ganesh. Uh, and uh, the last comment uh, from the chat is, Parohmin, uh, hope uh, to answer this one, how possible we are to be the leader of uh, this producer in, in the globe particularly also to, to challenge uh, or to answer the possibility of uh, uh, how to fulfill the need of uh, 10 billion people in 2050. Uh, maybe uh, Min, uh could share uh, the question from uh, Trihat Moko. Uh, this is the four common in the chat room, uh, Pa Nomura. Probably you can say first uh, uh, to answer those uh, questions. Please, uh, Prof. Nomura. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Jisang, uh, thank you. And thank you for the uh, question. Uh, if I understand correctly, the first question is what is the impact of COVID pandemic uh, on Japanese fishery? Am I yeah, right? uh, yeah, both. If uh, you can say the Japanese uh, fisheries or, or even in global uh, fisheries. Uh. Ah, okay. Uh, e well, we probably, it remains to be seen because we are 
I mean, we have not had a lot of encounters uh, since 2000, uh, uh, since the outbreak of COVID-19. I mean, all, all AI interactions are by video. Uh, in the, in the uh, standing agenda item of regional fishery management organization is that subject, impact of fishery uh, by COVID-19. Uh, so I cannot uh, answer on behalf of the global fishery yet, but I will tell some story about Japanese fishery. Uh, not so much on specific Japanese fishery, both in terms of volume and uh, tonnage. Uh, most of the Japanese fisheries are being impacted by environmental change, not by a pandemic issue except that uh, many long distance fleets, Japanese fleets rely on uh, foreign crew, particularly Indonesian crew. Indonesian crew is so indispensable to Japanese long distance fleets because they are, I mean, they, 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 they know the fishery, they are very diligent. And uh, since they don't drink, they don't fight on the sea. Uh, uh, so it's very reliable. Without them, Japanese long distance fleets are not viable. Uh, what was the issue is uh, when we would like to change crew, uh, pandemic issue really uh, obstructed the exchange of the crew. So some Japanese fleets had to be idled on the, on, on the port. Uh, not because uh, uh, they suffer from COVID, uh, they, but all, uh, but they, they, uh, they cannot change the crew. So um, some crew had to stay for much longer than they wanted to be, and uh, 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 those Japanese fleet which. Uh, had a very uh, good relationship with Indonesian crew were very lucky so that they did not uh, uh, leave the vessel. But it's not always the case. So that is the most uh, remarkable impact of a pandemic issue on Japanese long distance fleet. Uh, social issues uh, are not so big issue for Japanese fleet because we have not being listed as bad guy by 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 uh, humane uh, environmentalists, uh, 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 so so we did not hear any uh, uh, inhumane news on board Japanese vessel. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 I don't know uh, why China uh, stands number one. Uh, 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 well, I, it's, it's not a new story. China has been number one last 20 years or so. Uh, but you have to uh, note that most of the Chinese uh, uh, catch are from freshwater fishery, freshwater aquaculture, I would say, mostly carp. Uh, that gives a, a lot of contribution to food security. Uh, not many other countries uh, uh, are relying on aquaculture production for food securities. To some parts, yes, for Indonesia, uh, like Alele, etc. But uh, usually, the industrial uh, nations aquaculture targeted on the very high value species because it's a commercial activity, not for the sake of uh, food security. Uh, but but in China's case, uh, uh, the aquaculture contributes a lot to food security, in my opinion. Most of the catch is from both capture and uh, uh, aquaculture come from uh, freshwater. Although with their increased economic power, uh, marine capture as well as marine aquaculture are increasing. Uh, the last question, how Indonesia uh, would uh, maintain or more contribute to world leader 
um, in food supply, if I understand the question correctly. Uh, well, uh, when you look at the Indonesian uh, 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 production, uh, majority of their production volume is from aquaculture, which is not for human consumption. Uh, so uh, for, we are talking about Indonesian uh, fisheries contribution for food uh, 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 security uh, comprising uh, uh, the, uh, let's say, let's say uh, um, uh, 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 capture fishery, uh, not uh, aquaculture because uh, 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 probably uh, my time aquaculture is mainly destined for export market, uh, as, uh, uh, as I, di I didn't know uh, uh, the uh, Indonesian's uh, biggest uh, value of aquaculture come from shrimp. Uh, I learned a lot from today's Lok Ming's Professor Lok Ming's uh, lecture, but uh, so, so I'm probably I'm not so uh, well uh, qualified to answer that question. But, but again, uh, in, uh, in Indonesia still has a lot of room to in, in improve, increase. Let's say, uh, not so much from capture fishery production because probably Indonesia is already over capacity, but from aquaculture production for food security purpose, both for mariculture and freshwater culture. I think I, I answer all the question. Thank you. Thank you, Nomura-sensei. Um, a very clear uh, answer uh, from Nomura-sensei uh, related with the pandemic issues and also aquaculture and fisheries issues, uh, including the Indonesian issues. Uh, uh, pa Rahmin, uh, please, uh, time is yours. Uh, right, I think the fundamental uh, challenge uh, faced by both aquaculture and capture fisheries is actually the demand for fish, seafood, and other fisheries commodities keep increasing, while the supply capacity or maximum sustainable yield of uh, uh, what we call uh, capture fisheries, be it in marine environment, uh, also in what they call uh, freshwater environment is limited or decreasing. Yeah, so I think to fill that gap uh, must be coming from aquaculture. Yeah, so with respect to uh, capture fisheries, uh, as you already know, uh, participant that the what they call uh, utilization utilization rate of marine capture fisheries, uh, what they call uh, potential in Indonesia is already about uh, 70%. Because last year, for example, we produce uh, marine catch about 7 million metric tons, while uh, our maximum sustainable yield, according to the National Stock Assessment Agency, or committee, sorry, is about 12.5 million metric tons. So it means about 70% of our marine fish stock already, uh, you know, exploited. While according to 1995 Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries, if we are going to, you know, uh, fish or catch uh, marine fish stock on sustainable basis, then we have to limit ourselves that the fishing intensity must not exceed 80% of, of, of maximum sustainable yield, yeah, right? So 80% from 12.5 million metric ton per year, meaning is about 10 million metric ton. So, and right now, if 80%, then only 8, 8, uh, 8 million metric ton. So we still have room for expansion, for expanding or increasing catch from marine fish stocks is only for another 1 million metric tons. While the need or demand for fish for domestic loan if right now our population already 280 million people and the consumption of fish per capita is already 55 uh, kilo, kilogram per person per year. So 55 kilogram per person per year times by 280 million, right? Is about uh, 14 million metric tons. So it's not enough only from uh, uh, captured fisheries. 
So that's why uh, Professor Nomura, uh, last year we produced about 7 million metric ton of crustacean, mollusks, and fish, fin fish from aquaculture uh, sector, Mr. Nomura. While our export volume for the whole what we call fishery commodities and products in, is only 1.2 million metric tons. So the large portion of both capture fisheries uh, commodities and aquaculture commodities actually used for domestic consumption or market. Yeah. So this uh, what we call uh, demonstrate that both aquaculture and capture fisheries in Indonesia are indeed uh, what, uh, what we call the main pillar of uh, securing food security in Indonesia. Just for your information, uh, dear participant, that six, uh, sorry, 60 percent of animal protein in, in intake for Indonesian people uh, is coming from fish, not from uh, egg, uh, beef, or from chicken. So remember, 60 percent of animal protein intake for Indonesian people coming from fish. So this is very significant yeah, for food security, uh, human health, and also what they call the, the, the nutrition for Indonesian people to be smart. Yeah. Uh, second question is about how to maximize mariculture production. You are right, uh, 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 Mr. Ganesh, that right now the largest uh, commodities uh, of, of aquaculture commodities in Indonesia is indeed coming from brackish water aquaculture or coastal aquaculture, especially uh, what they call uh, uh, faname, tiger prawn, uh, what they call milkfish, and also the uh, saline uh, tilapia. What I mean by saline tilapia is tilapia, which has been genetically engineered. So that tilapia, uh, which is the freshwater uh, species original, since 2002, Professor Romura already been able to be cultured or cultivated on brackish water environment in tambak, in uh, fish pond yeah, in the coastal area. That's because of the genetic, what they call, uh, what they call uh, 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 modification of that, that strain. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, the question how to maximize uh, mariculture production in Indonesia, because right now, the development intensity or utilization rate of mariculture in Indonesia only 3% of the total potential. So why? Because it's what you call only few examples of success stories of businessmen doing business in mariculture production in Indonesia. Yeah? In 1990s, uh, sorry, from the mid of 1980s until the mid of 1990s, there was a huge or big companies called Vega Maricultura, and it's uh, uh, what we call aquaculture site is in Sribawi Island uh, in in uh, you know uh, uh, Jakarta Bay. It has been successful. So since that time, and then many Indonesian people uh, follow uh, the business. But then in the last five years, especially since nine two thousand fifteen because of the government policy banning the, what they call, uh, use of uh, vessel or ship to transport live fish from Indonesia to Hong Kong, to Shanghai, to Singapore, to Tokyo, especially uh, a grouper. And then uh, marine culture production collapsed. Yeah. So uh, the current minister, uh, Minister uh, Sakti Wahyu Tenggono, has been trying its best to revive the activities of mariculture uh, production and business. And the government, the current government also try their best to increase, you know, the infrastructure uh, facilities of uh, mariculture production in Indonesia. And of course, to secure the special plan of the region that mariculture sector is indeed recognized in the special plan of any government level in Indonesia from kabupaten or district, provincial up to national level. Uh, and also the bank credit because President Jokowi already what you call, uh, what you call uh, knows that aquaculture sector is one of the top priority. So that's why uh, the banking sector already 
already given you know the the like uh, affirmative policy for example the interest rate of um, a bank for aquaculture investment in business is much lower than commercial rate and so forth and so forth and that last but not least to boost a mariculture business activity i think uh, mr danesh uh, government has to what you call uh, create a so called rule model or pilot project that demonstrate the profitability and the sustainability of mariculture business in indonesia otherwise a uh, newcomer will not be attractive yeah, to invest in mariculture okay and the third question how to achieve Uh, Indonesia become number one uh, aquaculture producer in the world. I am very optimistic because of three reasons. Number one, as I said, from potential point of view, Indonesia indeed has the largest potential of aquaculture production, which is about 100 million metric tons per year. Yeah, and as you can see from the table of Professor Nomura in my table, that right now. The total production of Chinese aquaculture is about 58 million metric ton, while Indonesia right now is about 24 million metric tons. So what is the gap? About 40 million metric tons, I think, can be overtaken by Indonesia in the next 10 years. Yeah, that's my prediction. Yeah, depending on the seriousness and uh, sincerity of Indonesian government and, and people. Yeah. to boost aquaculture production in Indonesia on inclusive and sustainable manner. And then uh, the last question, uh, number four, is how to feed 10 billion people from aquaculture? I think with the, what they call the development in technology, especially in, in what they call industry 4.0 technology, yeah, uh, particularly is in the form of Uh, internet of things, artificial intelligence, and so forth and so forth. Uh, precision aquaculture already been done. Right? So the way uh, we uh, fish farmer putting feed very precise without waste. Yeah? So the food conversion ratio right now, uh, Mr. Dennis and all participants already one. Okay, because uh, one kg or one kilogram of beet shrimp, molas or fish. Yeah? can be fed exactly by one kilogram of feed with sound based uh, uh, automatic feeder okay so that there is no leftover uh, uh, of feed uh, in the marine environment uh, sorry in the what we call uh, 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 culture media environment so that the the water quality of pond or kids net uh, you name it uh, can be maintained without pollution So on that case, uh, and also with the what they call the advancement in uh, biotechnology, genetic engineering, and also in uh, what they call aquaculture engineering, uh, pond design, uh, uh, kitchen net material, and so forth and so forth, uh, I'm sure the uh, uh, contribution from aquaculture sector to feed uh, uh, 10 billion people. In 2100, uh, 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 is what we call is a possibility. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Rahmin, Prof. Nomura. Uh, we run out of time. Uh, in fact, we still have many questions uh, in the chat room, but uh, because of uh, time, um, uh, I should stop the uh, decision uh, for today. Uh, but we still have. Uh, Uh, many session next, uh, but let me highlight some uh, of uh, topic that we have discussed. That uh, we've we heard uh, from Prof Nomura and Prof Rohmin that um, marine uh, fish, uh, fisheries and aquaculture is uh, uh, one of a promising sector. But also we hear some challenging issues, uh, including the global environmental issues. Uh, that we have to find the ways uh, to deal with those issues. Uh, as an example, uh, Prof. Nomura mentioned that for the case of Japan, uh, the pandemic, not so much problem, but the global environmental issues uh, uh, seems to be uh, bigger issues 
uh, for developing uh, the fisheries and also aquaculture. Uh, but we also hear that aquaculture is promising. Um, we, we, we need to find uh, the better mix of the issues aquaculture for fulfill uh, the food security issues, but also the economic benefit uh, to global economic trade. Uh, but also there is also another issue that aquaculture could be promising uh, as the solution for our energy issues uh, nowadays. Uh, and I think um, uh, one uh, point that I would like to highlight that Prof, uh, Prof Rahmin mentioned that we need uh, much more success story uh, as an um, example uh, that one of the uh, things that we need is the uh, political will from the government to keep promote that fisheries uh, as uh, whether for food resources or also for the economic benefit. I think uh, that solves my last note. I will hand over the decision to Mbak Laila or to Buinda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all, all the participants. Let's we give a big hand uh, to all uh, our speakers. Thank you again, Pa Rohmin, Prof Rohmin, and Prof Nomura. Uh, it will be nice to see you next time here in Yogyakarta. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Rohmin. Thank you, Pa Nomura. Professor Nomura, in October, I will be visiting Pukyong National University. So I hope I can meet you over there. Yeah? I will be please, there uh, please. for three days. Yeah. Thank you. Please contact us. Please. Thank you. I will, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Swadi. And thank you, Mr. Nomura Ichiro and Professor Rohmin Dahuri for the informative and insightful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the opening ceremony. Let's take a photo together to all committee. Time is yours. Dear ladies and gentlemen, please let me to guide the photo session. We will divide uh, the photo into three sections. So for the first page, uh, we will take the picture on my count, one, two, and three. We will continue to the next page. For the second page, uh, we will take a photo in one, two, and three. Okay, thank you. And we will move to the last page. For the third page, uh, we will take a photo together in my count, one, two, and three. Thank you uh, for the joining on the photo session. I turn back to the master of ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, before we close the ceremony, we would like to inform you of some announcement. First, first meeting schedule will be held on Thursday for August the 10th. 2022. The theme of the second course meeting is environmental change impacting ecosystem and will be guided by Dr. Eko Budi as a moderator. And invited speakers are Dr. Bartolomeo Gurgo Cleon from Michigan State University, USA, will present emerging mixozoan parasite to warmer northern freshwater, and Dr. Riza Yuli Ratno Stiawan from Universitas Kajamada, Indonesia will present seasonal and interannual variability of the Indonesian seas. And Dr. Chelsea Rohman from University of Toronto, Canada, will present microplastic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Finally, I apologize for any mistaken. We hope you enjoy the summer course.